Welcome back to Writings and Lessons. Today we're talking about split bars. In our last lesson, we played a very simple arrangement of Amazing Grace that had one chord for each bar or measure. Both terms mean the same. I'll probably use the word bar more. Today we're gonna to talk about what happens when there's more than one chord in a bar and how the number system documents that and how we play it. So let's get started. This is the chart of Amazing Grace that we learned in our last lesson. As a review, the three in the time signature means that every bar gets three counts. So the one chord was one, two, three, one, two, three. So each number represents one bar. So this is a different arrangement of the same song. It's still in three, four time, which means every bar gets three counts. But you can see this looks different than the chart we used for the first lesson. When there's a line drawn, as in this bar, that means that there's more than one chord in the bar in, uh, in the count of three. And the number system documents how long each chord is played. So these tick marks tell you how many beats each chord gets. We still just have three beats in each bar for this song. So it's telling you that the one chord gets two beats, so there's two tick marks under the one, and the five gets one beat. So you've got one, two, three, one, two, three. Then you move to the four chord for three beats. One, two, three, back to the one chord for three beats. Then when you come to this one, you play the one chord for one, two, the five chord gets one beat. So one, two, three, and then you go right to the six chord. So you can't hesitate. A lot of my students, after they play that second chord, they stop and hesitate, but you just keep going because the beat keeps going. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, etc. You can see when we get down here, there's two more split bars. So the beat is continual, but when there's a line drawn, it's the number system documents which chord gets how many beats out of the three, and it documents that for you. So everybody's looking at the same chart if you've got a full band and everybody is playing the exact same chords for each beat. I'm gonna play with my right hand and then point to the numbers with my left, um, just to help help you play through the chart. So one, two, three, one, two, three, And then one, two, We're going to learn a second chart for this lesson, and it's the Crawdad song, which is public domain. This song is in 4-4, four, four, which means that there's four beats in each measure or bar. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, etc. And you'll notice that with this song, each section of the song has the exact same chord uh, pattern, and that's very common. So this in this song, there's one bar in each section that's a split bar. And so you'll notice it has a line under it, just like we talked about earlier. The difference in this one is that this bar is split evenly. Because we're in 4-4 four, four time, the one gets two beats and the five gets two beats. When you have a bar that's an even split, there are no tick marks. So when there's no tick marks, you can assume the chords are split evenly. So this would be, you play the one chord, one, two, 
three, four. So the five gets the second two beats. So when you're playing through this verse, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then you go back to the last chord of that section. Now we're gonna play the crawdad song with my daughter singing it, and we're gonna use the metronome. Today we have the second arrangement of Amazing Grace that includes split bars, and we also have the Crawdad song in the drop-down menu below, so you can you have access to both of those charts. There's also a, uh, a summary of the lesson in a handout form below as well. And so it just summarizes what we've talked about, uh, the concept of split bars. So please feel comfortable asking questions in the comments if there's something that you're not clear on. The, the downside to doing this type of lesson versus a one-on-one -on -one in-person lesson is I can't watch you play and see specifically what you're struggling with. So feel free to comment and ask questions and I will answer your questions as best I can. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I can do that through Zoom. Send an email to me through my website at writingsandlessons.com in the contact page and let me know you're interested. I can do weekly or bi-weekly lessons. Also, if you want just one lesson to make sure you're on track, after taking the lessons on YouTube. I'm happy to do one lesson just to answer any questions or if you feel like you're stuck in any areas, I'm happy to help. So contact me if you're interested in setting up some private lessons. So uh, just a reminder that when you're learning new information, a new skill, repetition is huge. You may need to watch the last video and this video again. Read through the handout and keep practicing. You don't, people don't learn to play overnight and the first time you play isn't gonna be perfect. You may need to play. If you're interested in taking private lessons, I can do that through Zoom. Send an email to me through my website at writingsandlessons.com in the contact page 
can let me know you're interested. I can do weekly or bi-weekly lessons. Also, if you want just one lesson to make sure you're on track after taking the lessons on YouTube, I'm happy to do one lesson just to answer any questions or if you feel like you're stuck in any areas, I'm happy to help. So contact me if you're interested in setting up some private lessons. The lesson through several times with just your right hand and get those chords, get comfortable with the chords and then add your left hand in. Other people prefer to learn both hands together. So there's not a right or a wrong way. It's about your own learning style and what you're most comfortable with. I have a website called writingsandlessons.com and there's more information about me, about the number system. There's some blogs that I've written over the past several years. Um, feel free to email me through that website. I also have a handbook that, uh, that just gives a summary of the number system some of the information that we've talked about in this lesson. There's also a section at the end of the handbook that documents major chords, minor chords, all the different types like diminished, augmented, and um, it will also help when we start talking about transposing. So that handbook could also help if you play guitar or bass guitar. That's $10 and there is a link in this lesson if you're interested in finding out more about that. I have a Facebook page called Writings and Lessons and um, so I look forward to hearing from you and I will talk to you soon in our next lesson.